Uh, you know what video is doing really well lately? <laughs> Culture shock. Were you shocked when I said that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done a few Culture Shock videos. Yeah. I've done one about Kenya. You've done one or two, I would think, about the U.S. Yeah. At this point. We've also talked about the differences between Nairobi and New York City. Mm -hmm. You can find all those videos on the channel. We'll leave some links somewhere. Um, yeah. So what are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about culture shock. I'm always going to say it like that. Is that okay? Okay. My second round of culture shock, coming to Kenya. Mm -hmm. So the second time I went to Kenya, we went to the Lake... What do you, Nyanza. We only went to Nyanza. Lake Nyanza. <laughs> not Lake Nyanza because we, dis as I discovered, Nyanza means lake. Mm -hmm. So I was saying lake, lake. Lake, lake. My apologies. What is the Lua word for that lake, for that particular lake? Lolwe. 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 Which I remember because the French go, oh, lo, 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 all the time when they're like distressed about things. <laughs> oh, lo, lo, lo. Wait, oh, Lolwe. Lolwe. Oh, just Lolwe. Though in Lua we have wololololol to me to show surprise. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Oh, that's something that that the Lua and the French have in common. Would the the do you think Lua folks don't mind being compared to the French or what? I don't think they would mind. But yeah. Okay. Great. Well, <laughs> the Lua are the French of Kenya. Oh God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the first time I went to. Nyanza province, what is now all those different counties around uh, Lololwo. Lolwe. <laughs> Lolwe. <laughs> is it spelt like lol? And we, yeah. Lolwe. Lol like we laugh out loud. Lolwe. Now I'm going to remember it. Yes, Lolwe. Lol. <laughs> lol. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here are seven things that I found shocking. The first time I went to Kisumu, that area, Kisumu, Siaya, that whole area. Mm. Okay. Culture shock number one, eating fresh fish right off the lake. All right. Not as shocking to me as <laughs> I made it sound. Look, I grew up on Long Island. It's an island, a lot of fish, you know, but I didn't grow up eating fish, actually. Uh, it took me till later in life to start eating and enjoying fish. So it was a great pleasure for me to go to Kenya and to discover that Fisher people go out onto the lake, catch fish, and literally you're just eating what they caught that day. Did you just say fish are people? No, fish are people. Like people who oh, fish. Fish, fish people. <laughs> Fishmongers. <laughs> Fishmongers. <laughs> I had fish are people. I was like, what? Are anyway. there fish people in Kenya? You let us know. <laughs> that would be shocking. <laughs> Fresh fish. Wow. Mm, so good. And. Oh, this is a little shocking. The fish in question is tilapia. Now, tilapia here in the United States has been farmed very heavily, mm. meaning that there are actually like areas, lakes, and you know whatever, where they they farm fish like livestock, you know, as you would cattle or goats or you know sheep. And they do that with fish, specifically tilapia. Tilapia apparently is very good at being farmed. But as a consequence, I think the tilapia here in the United States doesn't taste all that great. It actually doesn't <laughs> taste like much of anything. The first time I ever actually felt like I tasted a piece of tilapia was when I was in Kisumu. Oh. It was very good. Very good. Very fresh. A little tilapia, a little kachumbari, some ugali. Yeah. All right, number two. We talked a little bit about our traditional Lua wedding, and I didn't really talk much about the actual going to the, what the village looked like or any of that kind of thing. And so one of the shocking things for me was discovering that houses in the village have a separate kitchen from the main house. Mm -hmm. Here in America, pretty much across the board, no matter where you are, rural, suburban, urban, your kitchen is in the house. So there's a room in your house where all the cooking gets done. Now in Nairobi, I, for the most, there's, that's standard as well. You know, nobody has really an outdoor kitchen per se in Nairobi. But in the village, 
sure enough, we, uh, you know, when I got there and I was looking around, I was like, oh, all the people are cooking out in that sort of <laughs> mud hut yeah. over in the corner. And that's where the cooking gets done. So there really is no inside kitchen. There is like, I mean, my parents' house is a kitchen, but it's tiny. So the reason people do this is because we use firewood to cook. Mm. And if you have the kind of a kitchen in a house, your whole house will be smelling of smoke. Oh, so, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. When you put it that way, you know, somehow old houses have these wood burning stoves yeah. and people do cook on them occasionally. Yeah, I've done I've done that stayed in the mountains in Colorado and that's how the cooking was done mm. you know and you're right the, the house the whole house gets smoky yeah so I can see why we'd want to do that all right makes sense <laughs> shocking item number three the police the police are shocking here in the United States too but that's <laughs> yeah. another story I'd encountered the police before I'd in Kenya seen them in Nairobi Mostly directing traffic, kind of just, you know, being around, doing their thing, you know, mm. whatever. But uh, the first time I really had that interaction with the police mm -hmm. was driving from the village in Siaya to back to Kisumu. And I think your brother was driving mm -hmm. and we got stopped by the, the police because they do that. It's not like... Here in America, the police will stop you because you're speeding and they have a little radar gun and they're checking to see how fast you're going or, you know, you have a light out or something like that. You know, that's the reason why you're getting stopped by the police here. There, they have actual, like, checkpoints almost set up sometimes and they'll just, they'll have you pull over. And this uh, police officer looks in this van and, you know, there's all these mzungus, wazungus sitting in the back seat. <laughs> he is like, where are you coming from? What's going on? And you know, I, I, I understand now that, that there are many Kenyans who can't tell an American accent from other accents uh, that, you know, British person and an Australian and they all kind of sound the same. He, he had no clue, you know, who we were, what we were doing. And he wanted to see our passports. And uh, my friend, Matt, who I, we've <laughs> talked about before, he's a very, he's very anti-police generally. <laughs> Let's just oh, say man. that. <laughs> And so, and he was sitting in the middle. I think that was a good thing. If he had been sitting close <laughs> to this door, there's no telling what would have happened. We all would be in some prison somewhere. I didn't even have my passport on me. I think it was in a bag in the back somewhere. And some, some of the others pulled their passports out and, you know, we're just like holding on to them. Like, don't let them take your passports. And, and eventually this guy let us go. Um, we didn't pay anything, you know, <laughs> we're very much against all of that stuff. Uh, so... That was my interaction. It was it was shocking in that there was no good reason. Like we were stopped for no good reason. I do, I hate when that happens here in the states, as it uh, it does happen to some more yeah. frequently than others. I've been stopped a lot in Kenya uh, because of the type of car I was driving. So there's this notoriously known car, like it's just like a target for police. If you're seen driving it, they stop you. Oh. And so it's a pro box and it used to be my for my dad's company, you know, delivering goods and whatever. And so I would be stopped all the time while I was driving it. It was tinted as well. I, I know why they would do that. Actually there's a time I was driving with my mom and all of a sudden though like all these police coming like holding guns, you know. Mm. They're like roll your windows, roll your windows and then my mom and I was screaming, like, what's going on? And then they saw two women. They're like, oh, they back, backed, backed out. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and then my mom was like, what's going on? And they're like, oh, we're looking for someone who's driving a pro box like yours. I'm like, okay. So, yeah. Shocking thing number four. We stayed at this uh, lovely Airbnb house in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I had, you know, several bedrooms. It was a whole house, you know. And one of the things that shocked me was that there was a sink in the dining room. After I was shocked by that, I realized, well, I guess that makes sense because you want to wash your hands before you eat a meal, right? So that's actually very clever. And it's something that I will think about in the future once we have our own house, if we have our own house here in America, as I imagine we will. Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, culture, the all fast culture shock, I think you mentioned Kenyans washing their hands a lot. So it's something related to that. Because mm -hmm. when you 
visit someone they come with a basin and a jug and you must wash your hand oh yeah i remember so, that at your your uncles yeah it's a common thing yeah. so i think it's an express way you just use your mind oh there's a sink that let me get up wash my hands and yeah. bother people that's right so, so americans if uh you know if you're going to kenya and somebody offers you a bowl of water it's not for you to drink <laughs> oh, don't God. drink don't wash that. your face <laughs> don't don't dab don't like wash <laughs> under your arms with it. Culture shock number five. This house again that we stayed at in Kisumu. It's a nice house, like I said. Bedrooms, big dining room, big living room area, kind of like a um, an outdoor patio thing off to the side. Mm -hmm. But one thing that was interesting is that when you walk in, the there's a gate <laughs> inside the house that separates the bedrooms from the rest of the house. And it was a little <laughs> shocking. It was a little <laughs> odd. But again, you know, I thought about it a bit. And I was like, well, I guess this makes sense. You know, oh, somebody builds this house in this area of Kisumu they're gonna want extra protection. They're gonna make sure that they are safe when they're sleeping at night. Yeah. So of course, there's a gate on the outside to keep out the riffraff, but say you cross that gate. Well, now you have to get through the, the main doors of the house and those are gated as well. Yeah. Okay, now say you somehow make it manage to get through there, you have another <laughs> gate yet to get through. And I would imagine that's enough time. I mean, you'll somebody there will have known that there are people coming, intruding and you'll have time to have, you know, either f called some sort of help or, you know, to get out your, your shotgun or whatever it is you do. <clears throat> Those kind of gates, we call them bagla proofs. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and as the name suggests, it's just to keep buglers away. Mm. But I found it very extreme to have this, like, inside the house mm. that, that I'd never seen before. Yeah, I have to imagine it, it has to do with those times of unrest. Yeah. Um, the downside of it, I feel like, if, say, there's a fire mm -hmm. and you're all locked at the back of that and no one can get to you, then, yeah. you know, it yeah. wouldn't be a good thing. So. Culture shock number six. When you go to a restaurant and you order a soft drink here in America, you can order as many of those as you want. In Kenya, that is not the case. <laughs> and if you order, say, three Coca-Colas, <laughs> you will be charged for three Coca-Colas. This was a huge thing. <clears throat> it wasn't as shocking at our wedding, but at our wedding, we, pay, we had to pay for all of the sodas individually. It wasn't a matter of here oh, in America, you yeah. would just pay, you know, you pay for the that that idea of everyone's gonna have a drink and mm. that's it so it was a bit shocking the first time i was in kenya generally i didn't notice it when we were in nairobi because i don't think we maybe i didn't order soft drinks so much or whatever but i when we went and ate at this fish place on the lake we all ordered we tried all the soda we wanted to try all the all the soda products and yeah, we paid for each and every single one of them. <laughs> I find in America, they do the same with coffee, like regular coffee. You can just go for refills mm -hmm. as much as you want. And I feel like they should do that for tea, because, you know, tea sure. is a commodity. It's readily available. So. Yeah. Culture shock number seven. We're talking about soda. It's in line with that. Can we talk for a moment about stony? <laughs> it's shock. not stony. What is it? Stony. So we tried all these sodas, we're sitting at this fish place, and one of the sodas was this stony, Tanguizi. I love ginger ale. It's probably my favorite soda nowadays. And so, you know, I was like, oh, you can try this, try this Tanguizi. It's going to be strong. It's going to be strong. I was like, all right, fine. <laughs> it's so good. I wish we had it here. Does I'm, anybody know? Can uh, we get Tanguizi here? I don't know, but talk about a culture shock. Like, that, that's a proper ginger ale. Ginger ale here in America tends to not taste so much like ginger. So if you like this video and you'd like to see more, be sure to share, like, and subscribe, and tell us some of your culture shocks from wherever you are. If you're somebody who's traveled to lake regions, either in Kenya or in Uganda, Tanzania, anywhere around there, 
let us know down in the comments below what some of your culture shocks may have been. Because mm -hmm. uh, even I think if you're from the coast and you go to the lake, that's also oh, a different. huge, yeah. a huge shock. And until next time, bye, Harry. Bye. While others may be rich of pocket, we are rich of heart.